okay so yesterday we covered black box testing within which we covered ba part we did not cover user part yesterday now both bas and users are going to perform same level of testing in terms of component integration testing as well as system integration testing business users are also going to use a system application like we are going to use they are also going to use test cases and most of the time the same test cases you guys have written you will be passing on those test cases uh, to the user team so they can perform testing only difference is their testing will be called as user acceptance testing user acceptance testing but if we break it down they are also doing cit they are also doing sit so the whole team starting from dev going into bas going into users all are actually performing component integration testing and system integration testing but the names are a bit different for users and bas because user testing is done in uat environment as well the application will no more be in the dev environment whatever they would be testing they will be testing the real time data real time customers and when i say real time doesn't mean real time it's just real data because uh, the uat data is the uh, mirror copy of your production data it is only one thing one difference is that it is not updated on daily basis but they are using the actual data to perform testing and that is called uat testing it's a very very common question in your interviews that have you ever done uat or have you ever supported user acceptance testing or what is your experience with uat so there could be multiple things you can do you can yourself perform uat as well uh, and that is only and given when your business uh, let's suppose tells you that okay we don't have enough users we are busy in operations so can you perform testing for us in the uat environment okay and then let us know if there's anything but most cases users will self do it most cases 90% of the cases users are going to participate because the onus on them is as well uh, if something goes wrong they might question them that okay guys you tested it as well and you didn't raise any issue that time so what's happening now so that is why users are always going to do testing most cases in my case in one of my projects i had to do uat testing even though there was uh two users who were dedicated to us that they will be doing the testing but eventually they emailed me and you know they set up a meeting with me and they said you can simply walk us through what you are doing we can have two meetings uh in one week you'll be able to perform that so i said yeah i'll be able to do that so i had to do uat for them and then report it to them the what whatever my uh results was so that is user acceptance now what you as a ba are going to do mainly is supporting uat and when you say supporting uat supporting uat means that you are going to provide them with the information they need which is basically your documents test plan and test cases you need to help them prepare test data as well you will get access to uh, uat or uh, sometime they will be doing the data preparation as well but sometime they will give you access to uat and they'll ask you to pick up some sample client ids and transaction ids and all that and then you can uh, give it to them pass it to your users so they can perform testing system integration testing on it so supporting is basically what you do and then communication communicating between the user testing team uh, and the development team let's suppose if there is any issue they are facing you can simply communicate it back to your development team that this is what users are having this trouble they are having so we can resolve that so supporting uat is that what you do and in some cases they will also request you that if you can give us a demo of the application okay because if you know they are not familiar with all the functionalities then they will literally tell you that okay can you walk us through this application 30 minute 45 minutes 1 hour whatever session it needs you have to set up that session and you have to give them a demo by using the application so this is the application these are different components function this is how it is going to work so if you show them it will be easy for them to test the application so that is what you do as a business analyst uh, during user acceptance testing so these are manual testings done by bas and users 
we call them functional testing as well uh, in your interviews this question is going to come what kind of testing you have done so you simply have to say that i've performed functional testing within which i've done sit as well as cat testing and i have supported uh, user acceptance testing uh, teams in performing testing so these are a few things and then further they can ask you what is system integration testing how do you do it what environment do you use so environment is your dev environment i told you already your application is still in the development environment when it is being tested by the it team developed configured in the production uh, in the dev environment and same time once it is done uh, you have to test the application developers and you have to test the application in same dev environment so this question can come in so what environments you use so i was using dev environment for performing sat and cat testing okay uh, what is CIT testing? It is a component integration testing for which we have to test every single component, breaking down into functionality, creating test cases on it, running those test cases and test scripts, getting the results back to development team, finding any bugs, or logging those bugs, uh, and making sure that they are worked on. System integration testing is data testing, making sure that application is properly integrated with your databases or other application through which it is interacting. So performing that by having by, by by getting the sample data running that sample data in the application and then confirming the results with the backend that is your now what is a test case how do you write a test case you already know that test case have a template test case all the test cases have test case id they have a name they have a short description every test case is coming from a business requirement so what is the business requirement number mention that what are the precondition to test so if you want to log in then preconditions are having internet having valid email id and password if it is a positive test case uh, and then test case steps every step which is needed to log in that is needed to be written and then you have expected results actual results and pass fail criteria that is your test case okay now as I said, test plan is mainly going to be delivered by QA team, but I'll just show you, uh, walk you through my template uh, of Barclays today so that you simply know what are the table of contents. And in case if they ask you this uh, to build, to develop it, you will be able to design it. So this is your manual testing. Now talking about automation testing, and that is under black box, mainly the QA team, quality assurance team is the one who is going to do this testing. And they are mainly concerned about three, four things. Stress, performance testing, and load testing. And there are different automation tools. Selenium is one. QTP is one. There are other. Bugzilla is there. There are multiple tools they are going to use to perform these testing and these tools can only be run using some scripts uh, programming language scripts like java or c plus so they have to have some basic understanding of these scripts as well uh, as a ba you don't really do anything with them uh, only thing is if there's any communication that is needed to be done uh, for let's suppose if they are finding any issues they communicate it to you you communicate it back to your team and then further so communication wise it's fine but still mainly you communicate in the uat these are the tools they use and this is uh, the automation testing they perform so why they do that yesterday we were talking about it what is the testing which is done by the qa and uh, why they are not concerned with the data they are not here concerned mainly with the data they are concerned with two things as i said stress performance load okay they are going to check this software performance and hardware attached to that software that's performance for example uh, i'll give you a very simple example when facebook uh, basically it was launched in harvard as a community or a school website uh, social network and then eventually when they started uh, going through different universities initially they uh, uh, moved to uh, california and then from there they moved to london university one university in london cambridge i was i think it was so their users started getting more every day there were new people who were basically uh, registering with facebook and the speed and performance and everything started slowing down 
so the qa mainly is there to make sure that your system speed your system performance doesn't go down there are certain peak times uh, of your applications uh, sometime you will see that on the morning evening night time or evening time most of the applications they work very fast internet work fast faster daytime it's a bit slow so they want to see what are the peak time and how many users if there are multiple users who are using it if it is going to reduce the performance of it or not so these kind of things basically they check and they record their results before once they are done with it then the application is moved into production servers that mean application has been implemented launched uh, and when you say implemented implementation team is going to be there um, in banks that team is called rtb run the bank so rtb team is the one who's going to be implementing these solutions once they are finally done or production teams other names are production team so implementation will be done by them and they will be requesting you with some documents there are certain forms uh soas and oria submissions and how many users are going to use it what departments are going to be affected they will send you a questionnaire whatever information you already know you need to simply fill in those uh, questionnaires and then whatever information you don't know you need to get it from your development team put it there so at least they have a performer with them okay they have like a, a, a book with them a guideline with them that what if this application goes down or what could be different issues in, in future so how we are going to tackle these situation we need to know which uh, department it is going to affect uh, how many users are going to be using it and uh, run time down time all these information so they capture this information mainly development team or developers are the one who are going to be working with them as a BA, you can mainly do this, submit them the FRDs, user stories, test cases, test plan, test case results, and all those things. You can simply submit all those documents to them. So they have a library for your application where all this data is stored. And then there are certain after implementation procedures which they need to uh, clarify. And those procedures are nothing but maintenance of the application, how this application is going to be updated and all that. Uh, our timing results history all those so they these are all the discussions which are done uh, as a ba i don't see your role there but if you know it, it's a better thing in case if somebody have interview and they just simply ask you a question oh have you ever worked on with the production team during the implementation phase and all that so you need to know as a ba what can you do what can you offer these are a few things you do on the implementation side uh, anyone have any question Uh, Imran, this is Anil. Yes, sir. Uh, when this Q QA team and uh, they are testing, especially on automated testing, and you said the role of the BA is to communicate uh, between the QA team as well as the developers. Mm -hmm. So, if they are using the latest tools like um, our agile tools, uh, how is this communication done in in reality? So basically, uh, every organization have a mechanism. If you are working in an agile uh, environment, uh, most companies basically they don't want to complicate this process. What they do is, or most teams who are untrained, I would say, what they do is they use Jira for logging in defects. And when there is a bug or something, people they create ticket on Jira and then they share this ticket. Everyone get notification that this happened. Some companies have a mechanism that they upload their test cases, test plan, test results, defects, everything in SharePoint or Share Drive. And access is giving to every given to everyone but there are many companies many firms who use a professional tool uh, a quality center tool uh, there are multiple available in the market barclay was using alm quality center hp quality center is there multi quality center is there so all these tools are same so consider these tools as jira jira is managing your agile process these tools are managing your testing processes so let's suppose if you are using ALM quality center, everything will be logged there. There will be different modules, each module, one module have documentation, one module have requirement, one module have test cases, one module have the defects there, what, what is the status of those defects. And then one module is nothing but a simple dashboard, which is showing the status of your testing and all that. So QA can simply, uh, same all the teams can simply go in there and log in all these uh, defects, whatever issues they are finding. As a PA, what you can do is follow up, making sure that 
whatever defects they have logged in, launched in, have they been given priority or not? High priority or medium and low? Have they been assigned to anyone? Have they been fixed? Have they been retested? Have they been logged back? So that is what you are going to do. Overall, in most organizations, there are tools. Every team member, testing team member, is going to be having access to that, and they are going to simply report everything there. My question from a layman standpoint, Imran, like when this is all available, accessible to even developers and testers, mm -hmm. uh, yes. would the developers see by themselves when they raise the uh, bug? Uh, I mean, how is that he's communicating? How is the BA is communicating? When there's a bug? Uh, what when when there is a bug in the automatic automation testing, and this bug is reported in uh, any tool like Jira tool or LM testing tool, and which the tool is having uh, been accessed by all the developers, testers, and mm -hmm. the business analyst. So if the developer is an access, uh, what is the role left by BA now to communicate? Because he, the bug is already lo logged in the ALM tool, okay. the developer can use it. Uh, see it by himself. No, so here, here is your role basically. Uh, you are taking responsibility uh, to make sure that this uh, is done within the time frame. Every testing phase, you're going to have a time phase, one month or two months. Now, let's suppose if you developer is not assigning it to yourself or to himself, and you are checking or after every three four hours, and you're going into that tool and seeing the status if these bugs have been opened, if these bugs have been worked or not worked, and you have to conduct a meeting. There are going to be multiple meeting on Thursday or Friday, where IT team BAs are going to sit and discuss what is the status of our testing, who's working on what bugs, what bugs are critical, where we are having troubles and issues, because your job is to get this information, pass it on to project management team because they need to go back and pass it on to the business users. Your developers are not going to, uh, let, let's suppose if they assign themselves something, your project management team is not going to know how many open bugs are there, how many uh, bugs have been fixed this week. So all these status, all these reports, these are discussed. BAs have the responsibility to write down either minutes of meeting, to document this, to create either a dashboard, uh, a test summary page. I, I will show you in. Uh, one when I'm going to cover my test plan and test cases, there's a page at the end that is what you need to design and see how many tests were failed for one first time, second time, how many were resolved. All these status report, all these uh, what you call small successes, you have to go back and you have to continuously give these details. Project management team is so free that they will keep bugging you. What is happening? Okay, can you send me a status deck on, on your testing, status report on your testing? Can you submit me by, by this Friday? Can you have a discussion with me by this Thursday? So they're going to keep bugging you because they want to know. They don't want you to be quiet. If there is no communication, then there's no purpose of having this whole team and agile and all those things. So communication, communication, and communication, that is what they get paid for. The project management team so they bug us we get the information from development team even though we know they are working even though we know they have assigned it to themselves even though we know that they are talking to qa team or user team as well but still we are the one who have to report these and that is why there are weekly status decks there are weekly status meetings which are conducted so if you as a ba are not having anything to discuss to talk about then it's going to look bad on you even though developers can talk about it, okay, we are working on this, we are working on that, but as a BA, it is your responsibility to have a document prepared, maybe an Excel sheet prepared, or a Word document where you're putting a summary or a PowerPoint presentation template will be provided to you by your project manager where that we want these weekly status decks from you where every single member of your team, his name is listed uh, on each page and what they are doing, what issues they are facing. You have to get these updates and all that. So that is the core reason. And when I say as a BA, your most important role is what? Requirement gathering, analysis, documentation, and testing, only your testing. Now, even in implementation, they don't need you, but they still keep you. 
QA team get fired, they, they, get, they, they, they are told that okay, you can go once the implementation is going on or any other developers, they can be let go on, but BA1 or two BAs are supposed to be there for the communication purpose and that is the only reason or not the only reason, of course, that is the major reason they have hired you for. So that is where, where I'm saying that even though all these teams are testing themselves, they are self-sufficient, they know what they need to do. But as a BA, you have to keep track of all these things. Uh, within the BA, run, so let's say uh, you had Barclays, you had four people before they got fired. So within the BA team, who is the project management team going to ask? All the four of them together? So or team, the lead BA? There's a team lead. There's always a team lead. Uh, that is the one who is uh, the point of contact for the business team uh, if they want to know the status and all. Even though all the team's uh, members are sitting there, all the BAs would be sitting there, but of course the answerable person is going to be the team leader. Okay, so if I understand it right, uh, the project management team asks the team BA team lead. The BA team lead, before answering that, uh, he's already prepared with the BA team mm -hmm. gathering this report from the BA team members, mm -hmm. is it? Exactly. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'll once we uh, go in the domain session, I'll be giving you real time examples as well. What daily tasks they assign you sometimes, which are not even part of your project, they can be operational. They might say, Can you create us this DAC or can you create us a library of all our requirements or can you create us a library of all our current project, their timelines and dates and all that? Sometimes these kind of tasks are also going to come to you. So we will be ready for these kind of things as well. Okay. Now, what if there's only one BA? So that is the lead BA and that is the only answerable person in terms of documentation and requirements and all that. Okay, so this is your complete testing. Um, I hope you guys have done your assignments and I'm very serious about it that if you don't finish all these four assignments, I'm going to be uh, doing mock interviews on Monday. Okay, a couple of mock Friday and one on Monday. Thoroughly talking about whatever we have covered so far. Anyone who haven't finished their assignment, they can join the session, but they cannot answer. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And just be good work. Um, th three time you had to send me assignment first time you send me i said it's short second time you send me i said two are fine one is not third time you completed i'm it. sorry Stop i'm not from five o'clock can i do this listen listen very <laughs> very important I'm doing back and forth. consider this thing when you are writing a user story specification that is what going yes. to be coded that is what going to be developed sure. So it is all responsibility okay. of a BA to make sure like every each tiny detail has to be there. Exactly, every yeah. so the, detail information. So the first one, I just um, I I put everything that I would transfer on my app. So those are steps I did. When you said it's not done yet, yes. Okay. And I'm working on my test cases. Perfect. I still have like one part left. Yes. Use case also. You have to create two use cases as well. Go back and listen to. Yeah, that that was I was confused about when was that homework was assigned? Did I miss anything? You didn't listen to so, day four lecture. Go in your drive, Gmail drive. I did. I did. You said I I listened to the whole lecture. I didn't mention that uh, assignment in this lecture. I I don't know. Maybe I didn't listen to that one. And Anil, that did, did you did you hear that lecture day five day four UML lecture? Yes, Imran. Was it mentioned uh, or did I miss it? It was mentioned. It was mentioned in the. Uh, uh, it was very clear and loud from your side to send that. Uh, <laughs> Then oh, I missed okay. that part. Okay. But I did I did listen to the whole part. I'm like, when did that was assigned? Uh, so okay. And finish I that. did listen to that in the morning. I was up four o'clock again. Okay. So maybe so I was half sleeping. Have, you still have three good days. You still have three good days to finish it. Okay. Yes, I'm I'm off from college. I'm gonna do it. It's just that I have two classes. It's too much from there. I'm graduating within one year. I I'm doing another bachelor. That's why I have uh, this week. I, I'm gonna catch up on things. Yeah. Good. Thank right. you. Sorry about that. No problem. All right. Um, 
what are defects what are different types of defect what is the defect tracking life cycle uh, these are all basic stuff everything uh, is pretty self clear um, for example if you say what are different types of defects or defect classifications so they would be critical defects major defects medium major uh, and no medium is, is the different word they use okay critical defects are those defects uh, which are very important for the whole application and if that is not going to be fixed right away you will have trouble going further into testing your application is getting hurt because there's a major issue um, critical issue major issue could be with one function but one major function for example posting picture or sending or receiving message function is not working so that is a major minors are small issues small glitches then there are different types of cosmetic defects the color is not same again you don't need to worry about types of defects and all only thing you need to know is when defect is raised how you're going to raise that defect how are you going to work on that defect so and then how uh, you are going to analyze that defect so for analysis part i'll simply tell you rtm there is there there's a document called requirement traceability matrix that is a very useful document again it is optional it is not mandatory pretty much every company i have worked they keep it as optional that okay it's a good thing if you can create it but they don't really tell you that okay it's very important and all that but it is very important uh, and it becomes very important when you are having an issue uh, during testing and you're not able to identify what to do so at that point of time rtm becomes very very important so requirement traceability matrix what is it how you create it i'm simply going to tell you uh, the basic basic approach um, you simply have to put down your all your business requirements you have to put down all your functional requirements you have to put down all your test cases their ids and all and then what is the status everything together in one sheet excel sheet if let's suppose you join uh, a project they will if they want you to create this requirement traceability matrix they will give you a template let's suppose if they tell you that you create a template yourself then this is what you should do this is how you should be doing it without thinking if they tell you it is your own template whatever way you want to create it then simply do what i'm doing so consider this as an excel sheet there are going to be three sections and each section is further broken down into two sections or three so this is your business requirement section this overall total so business requirement this whole section is for your functional requirements and under business requirement you will have business requirement id or number so let's suppose you have 01 and here you will have business requirement use case so for example your use case is let's suppose i'm going to create traceability matrix of amazon website or application this is what we are going to do let's suppose we're going to uh, build amazon and we are now into testing phase so if i'm doing this how i'm going to create amazon website building process rtm document zero one requirement and let's suppose let's take that one of the business requirement use case use case mean high level uh, business requirement was payment module that they want to have a payment module within their application to which customers can make payments when we were started when we started doing the requirement gathering and analysis part we able to figure out how payment module is going to be functional how it is going to work 
so we also created either frd or we created user story so in this case let's suppose we had a frd functional requirement document so we'll simply put this section number two for your functional requirement document this is for your business requirement document this these components are coming from business requirement these components are coming from functional requirement so let's suppose functional requirement id and functional requirement use case which you design that use case which i gave you assignments uh, business use case is going to be high level it won't have include extend and all those things a very high level a functional use case or the basic use case which you design it is going to be detailed with include with extend and all those things. so whenever somebody tells you have you created use cases you have created high level use cases and detail level use cases high level mean that you created it for business users so they understand how application would look like but high level use case will not define all the includes and extends and generalizations and all those things but when you go and get more details on it when you do more analysis on it then you'll be able to design a very detailed level use case diagram which you guys did in your assignment by having all those include extend generalized concepts within it so the frid let's suppose it was 01 and functional use cases which we made a business use case can be broken down into multiple a business requirement can be broken down into multiple functional requirements for example payment module is a business requirement that is a high level business requirement they did not explain you at that time what kind of uh, payments they will be accepting but when we did more requirement gathering and analysis we we were able to figure out that they'll be using these payment methods so one of the use case was by credit card payment by credit card other was payment by debit card payment by paypal payment by amazon itself so one business requirement or business use case is giving birth to further four functional use cases okay and the third part is going to be your test case document this is where we are moving so we are moving from business into frd and from frd we are moving into test case document so test case simply you have to put down first column so consider this whole as test case first column is going to be priority so let's suppose by credit card is high priority test case test case number is let's suppose 01 so this is test case id test case short description user will be able to pay through credit card want to test this functionality and then you have the test case results so we tested it let's suppose it failed now how i'm going to use this document let's suppose this test case failed and i want to track it back and see where it started from all the documents which we written throughout this process going into test case document going into use case which you created going into fr functional requirement id which you've created going into business requirement and then going into business requirement document tracking it back finding the root cause that is how it is going to help you and support you so this is your traceability matrix document again broken down into three so business requirement document functional requirement document and test case document this is what you are going to put on an excel sheet and then business requirement id and business requirement use case or function or high level business requirement functional requirement further broken down into two functional requirement id and functional requirement use case name and test is basically starting from priority test case id test case description and result so these are going to be your three sections and you can do forward traceability where you are initially from let's suppose starting of your project you've started creating this you don't create it in one day there's no timeline to it that is why i'm saying it is always called an optional document because there nobody can give you a timeline on it it is completed started from first day when you start writing your business requirements and it is finished on the till you finish your test case results 
so it's a continuous update on this document and whenever you're getting brd you will put down your business requirements whenever you're going to work on business use cases you'll put down all the business use cases whenever you get your functional requirement cleared up you will have your functional use cases created and then test cases so you can do forward traceability by we're looking forward that how many test cases can be created from one business requirement or how many functional use cases can be created from one uh, business requirement in same way you can do backward traceability which is basically if you find a bug if you find a defect you can track it back and see go through every single document written on that functionality and see if there was any issue in the documentation itself if there was any issue in the use case which we created so that we are able to identify why this defect happened why this defect occurred clear or not clear so one more time on forward and backward right? one more time explain it okay so requirement traceability matrix rtm document is used mainly in the testing when developers or BAs are going to find defects, they need to find out the root cause for that defect. If it is a very small and minor defect, you will not even go and look into the documentation and all that. You will simply fix it. Okay, there could be there are going to be 90% or 80% defects which you don't even have to see in your RTM. But those defects which are causing trouble for you which have deviated from your functionality there's a major change in the software behavior then you want to find out why this happened then coding coding team is not going to take blame on it they're going to simply say that we followed the documentation so now if as a ba you already created this document you can simply show them and walk them through okay let's see how this whole thing started and where it is going to end so you will break down so when you're creating this you can start creating it from very start of your project let's suppose when you're into first month and your business requirements have been clarified you can start designing it from that time and simply you have to do these things you have to divide it into three parts business requirement documentation or documents functional requirement documentation and then your test documents a business requirement documentation will be further broken down into business requirement number or id and business requirement use case high level use, use case here means simply function what is the function they are looking for so let's suppose uh, authentication is our use case here authentication mean logging in criteria and business requirement id is 01 so only thing i have day one is this one requirement one brd of course when you have brd you'll have multiple so zero two requirement number two requirement i have <coughs> registration that if somebody want to register let's suppose it's a social platform or it's amazon where you have to register as a uh, account holder number three requirement is payment module okay now further when we went into our project and we gather more requirement on these use cases high level business requirements we gather more information we started doing user stories or we started doing requirement documents frd so we'll have further functional requirement number so let's take it here br use case br id and functional requirement use case so from this br functional is still one and use case let's suppose the one is authentication it is further broken down into two login using single sign on and login using email id and password so one business requirement gave birth to two further functional requirements payment module let's suppose a zero fourth functional requirement it gave birth to five more functional requirements 
payment using debit card that is one function we want to test and build payment using credit card payment using paypal payment using amazon payment using your bank account and now these function requirements once they have been designed of course they have been given priority high medium low whatever it is and then in testing they have been given a test number so test case id it was zero one name and description so user want to test login functionality and then you might have let's suppose for login using single sign on or login using email id or password you might have two test cases or three test cases positive testing negative testing so it is further branching out this section is going to be short this section is going to be longer and this section is going to be way longer because test cases are going to be multiple scenarios for one function which you want to test and then here are your results pass or fail so if let's suppose this test case failed i want to know why it failed if i can fix it fine if still we are not able to identify the reason go back open the test case which you have written read that test case template have you written that test case accurately were all the condition and steps were accurate okay they are fine all right where this test case is coming from this test case is coming from this functional requirement or functional use case go and check that use case diagram and read that uh, frd part where it is explained is it right or not right okay it is right that is how business user wanted to wanted it to be where this function requirement is coming from it is coming from this authentication business requirement go back in business requirement document and read it is it the same thing which business wanted and this is how we are doing it so track down doing the reverse traceability that is our, what you can do using rtm during your testing phases so this is an excel sheet you can create again it is not mandatory it is an optional document but for a good ba um, it's a very good skill most i've seen ba's um, work working with me in different projects doing these rtms even though their bosses didn't tell them uh, and when I asked one of them that why you have to do this and he said this is very important because if something happens during defects I am going to be clear that okay, let's go back and check. I'm going to make their life easy So this is a good approach. Uh, you should also uh, always if you join the project from very start You need to work on this document again as I said your manager might not tell you to do it But it is a good document. So requirement traceability matter. Is it clear now? <laughs> Yes, Imran. Okay. All right. Um, also, going to walk you through a defect life cycle. What is defect life cycle? When defects are raised, how they are basically resolved? What is the process? Again, you don't need to fixate on it because automatically things are very, very clear when you are in testing. You already know your teams, environments, processes, and all that, but still. So if somebody asks you what is the defect life cycle how do you do it so let's suppose if a ba finds a defect or a developer finds a defect they will create ticket on it or they will log the defect when i say log defect they can log it into any quality center and when they say create ticket they can use jira and when they are tracking it they consider it as a new defect and from there this defect need to be assigned mostly sell developers will self assign this defect to themselves if not then their development team or testing team will have a team leader who will be assigning these defects to the right person once defect is assigned the ticket will state the sticker test statuses will start keep on changing that this defect has been assigned to this person you all guys you all team members will get a notification through email that this defect has been opened if they are following a proper channel otherwise an email will be sent to all the developers that we are working on this defect uh, the status will be changed from new to open and then it should be fixed once it is fixed it need to be retested so anyone who opened this defect logged this defect they need to retest it again and if they feel that it is not still fine then they will simply reopen it and then when they reopen it it goes back into a sign section 
that somebody need to be assigned again but if they retest it they will verify it as a ba i'll simply verify it by putting my comment under the same jira ticket or in quality center by putting the status of the defect that it has been tested and once it is verified it can be closed okay so this is the basic workflow now there could be another situation another scenario where when you open the defect there could be multiple cases one is that they tell you that it is a duplicate we already have this we are already working on it so if it is a duplicate then they will let you know otherwise there could be another scenario where they can say it is rejected we don't consider it as defect and they will give you a reason as well there could be another situation where they say it is deferred that okay we cannot fix it in this phase we don't have time we'll communicate to next teams that we're still going in with this effect as it is not critical or major it's minor so we are going to defer it and communication need to be made and sometimes they will say it is not a bug so that can also happen okay so that situation can also happen so, but basic workflow is this whenever you find an issue defect during your testing that need to be the life cycle which need to be verified which need to be uh, implemented so this is your defect tracking life cycle now two things one is the test plan you guys have my brd or the barclays documentation i'm going to open that documentation right now and i'm going to walk you through test plan document one by one what every table of content carries and as a ba if you are supposed to work then in which part you are going to be inputting your effort okay so this is the test case document cit sit plan and closure report this will have all my test cases initial draft written by me first draft was written on april 20th the second draft was reviewed uh, may 11th and it was finalized pretty much on mid of uh, may so around uh, what you can say one month to write down all these documents these are the people who were participating in the testing um, these are my test cases all the test cases starting from here the tests starting from 4 4.1 so all these are the test cases which i've written then there's a closure report and testing cycle uh, the first four five pages or six pages are about what is this document purpose product description again guys when you're writing test cases using quality center you simply will have the template in quality center and you keep entering the steps it will keep on saving you don't need to do documentation or mostly you'll be doing it in excel sheet but for some reason i don't know why my project manager asked me i wanted to put it on b on 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 word document and have some kind of uh, table of contents generated not just the test cases so this is what i have to do again that is not what i am telling you that happens in every organization pretty much every organization they simply tell you to write down test cases either you write on excel sheet same way i told you yesterday or you write it down in the tool quality center and you done with it uh, so this is the test case document purpose is to perform testing on this tool product description what is this application so a brief about it 
what are we going to test so all the functionalities which we designed those are in scope anything which we didn't uh, agree on on the brd as well we are keeping that out of scope because we didn't design that even though that is in part of your brd but we referred it uh, we wanted to cover it in the subsequent phase overview uh, what is this application a basic application overview this is the architecture diagram this is the one which was designed by my architecture and i just had to put it you can also put this in your frd if you're designing frd instead of workflow better to put the architecture diagram and that diagram is given to you you don't have to do it if even you are designing it using microsoft visio the information is given to you or rough sketch is given to you your developer will design a rough sketch and he will simply tell you can you put it on excel or oh, sorry can you put it on visio or balsamic or lucid chart so you can simply do that uh, i don't remember if he designed this or i design i put it on uh, visio i think he put it what is the ui what is the middle layer what is the backend layer backend layer is data middle layer is the integration between front end and middle layer front end is my designed using html css3 and all that it is a single sign on these are my test cases purpose dependencies test description expected result pass or fail and then i'm taking snapshot okay uh, you don't need to follow this template it's very basic template template should be the one i gave you uh, so these are all the tests these are all the results i'm showing pass 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 so whatever testing was done um, so everything this is data testing guys this is system integration testing i was talking about so i'm checking the data putting the database results because there was a country named yemen uh, i put that country in my barclays uh, tool this application and it showed me seven accounts only or 22 accounts only that there are only 22 accounts in the investment banking uh, from yemen so i was like okay let me check it in database so when i checked it in database yemen have 22 records that there are only two 22 accounts so i verified that i'm getting the right data right information for all the data sets i've prepared sample data i prepared this is the whole testing document uh, the same assignment i gave you yesterday so this is the assignment and when you are writing test cases now i don't want you to take a snapshot but if you're doing it in your professional life ask your manager is it okay if you want me to put the snapshot of my test result as well even though i'm verifying it but i want to put a snapshot if he agrees then you can put snapshot my manager asked me to put snapshot okay so this is the report these are the test cases these are the test case descriptions these were any comments i had to made only one year of wire transactions are indexed in sit only three years of customer data is indexed in sit we are not utilizing the previous past data only one year and three month three year data was taken for testing purposes uh, cycle one we did 16 tests 14 passed two failed cycle two we did 31 tests two failed uh historic defect matrix two defects raised two closed test failed these were two tests which failed validation of 60 month rolling wire transaction data which is five year we were only able to find one year in the application even though our database had a 61 month data so then my uh, coding team found out that the mapping was a bit wrong they put a mapping for one year uh, when they were pulling the results uh validation of 16 months so these were two major issues which i recorded and then we figured it out finalized it and that's it now what is the test plan how does it look so last document is test plan hold on one second
<coughs> okay so this is the test plan reviewers and approvers first page oh god i have to do that hold on how can i rotate it it's not giving me option here it should it should it's pdf oh no i didn't open it yet hold on okay sorry Okay. Okay, so these are table of contents, introduction, scope of testing, planned testing. That means types of testing we are going to do. SIT, CIT, UAT, unit testing, volume testing, stress testing, performance testing, whatever categories are those. Test approach, what approach we are going to use. What is the entry criteria? What is the exit criteria of each phase? Test environment and test data. For SIT, CIT testing, we are going to use DAB data. For UAT testing, we are going to use the UAT environment. And we have the name copy pasted also. I'll show you that. Risk assumptions, dependencies and constraints. What is the acceptance criteria? Roles and responsibilities. What is going to be test schedule? Test governance, governance mechanism, defect management, supporting process. All these are your test plan table of content. Purpose of this document is to identify the activities, deliverables, and responsible parties to carry out an approved test. This document should be completed jointly by all impacted teams and approved by the account uh, accountable representative of each impacted area. Project background, just brief about your application, what department is it, it is affecting, scope is this, test planned testing. So we are going to do component integration testing to test interaction between programs modules the functional behavior at application level see these are all the notes made by my manager i took this document to him after printing it i showed him this and he made all these comments on it again this is not my document i did not write this document i only added my part which i will show you which one is this even i don't think they put me in the names who wrote it well, let me see this section for me. So is it a teamwork like everybody have their own part to do it yeah. mostly yeah yeah uh, most of the document is going to be prepared by the uh, development team sorry the qa team oh, okay. uh, very few things let's suppose they will ask you what are you going to do in sit what are you going to do in cit so those two slides you have to fill up Okay, so okay. I, have, okay, got it. I must have my name on it, but there's no first first page is missing on the test plan. So let's see what is the type of testing, plan testing. So we are going to do component integration testing. We're going to do system integration testing, user acceptance testing, volume performance testing, operational acceptance testing. These are different. What we are going to test in CIT, this is what I provided. So I said CIT test phase will conducted by the fixed team. CIT will test following verification of each functionality in the figs including user access landing page transaction view page customer account view page grid view structure page summary structure extended view export to pdf export to excel as a part of cat cc completion cat closure report along with the test results will be issued by the build team manager it is recommended that cat test certificates uh, such as test script as test results are stored in qc quality center these are doing the why are you putting it? So I was like, I thought Barclays would have a quality center. They said, yes, Barclays do, but our team does not use QC. So we are going to do manual everything. Uh, all the data should be put in shared drive. This I had to put SIT approach. The fixed development team will be responsible for the creation of the system integration test scripts in accordance to the integration test plan. A developer will be chosen by the team who will be responsible for execution of test scripts and clarifying that the integration test is complete. Barclay standard artifacts, whatever test plan will be produced. 
test scenarios will be prepared test cases will be prepared run schedule run plan all those details traceability to business requirements will be maintained throughout the test phase to map requirement to test cases in qc quality center he said we don't use it i was like okay as a part of the current release data correspondent Horner database will be indexed Hornet was a database. We will use UIT and SIT data environments for verification purposes. SIT approach is we are going to check all these things. Same functionality but based on data. Test cases will be designed to validate the following scenarios below. Approximately three years of data from customer and accounts and one year of data from wire transaction is being used to cover the maximum number of scenarios. At the end of each test cycle, a review will be conducted. So I'm checking all these functionalities based on data as well. SIT test approach, data validation, validate the data from fix UI and source. So that is what I was talking about. That we pick up a let's suppose a country name Yemen. I ran it into my global search tool and it returned me with 22 accounts from Yemen. So I wanted to verify it in the database as well. So I opened the database, ran my SQL query in it. When I found out that there are still same 22 records in database as well, so I was validating. So compare records, data completeness, make sure there's no duplicate and all those things. UAT test approach, a minimal data set will be used for maximum number of scenarios. Same thing you're doing in SIT, UAT uh, will also replicate this. Uh, SIT and CAT, both things will be replicated. VPT, volume performance testing, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. DR, I didn't do it. Test environments. What testing environments will be used for unit testing, development, SAT testing? Who's going to do, uh, sorry, test environments. Perform test environments, which will cut down version user system testing with UAT technical performance requirement, SIT system integration environment. So this is dev environment. UAT will use UAT environment. VPT will use QA environment. QAT will use QA environment. Test data, SIT. UAT, VPT, OAT. Uh, as part of SIT testing, it is planned to index data from Hornet. So you simply have to provide what is your data source, the name of the data source. So my application was only getting feeds from one data warehouse named Hornet database. So SIT data will also be taken from Hornet. UAT data from will be taken also from Hornet, but Hornet's DW UAT instance. Hornet data warehouse UAT instance. SIT data is data from Hornet dev access, uh, or sorry, uh, data warehouse from dev environment. The VPT from UAT instance, OAT to be still announced because they wanted to get the QA environment separately for them. So they had to decide if they have enough time to build up that or get access to it. What are the risk dependencies and constraints? Uh, Severity, priority, impact, status, all these other things will be looking. Uh, there are different types of risk, risk pertaining to data, not having the right data, accurate data. Uh, that is the risk, which is probability and owner is Imran Rafiq. Delay and deliverables from other teams for which testing team has dependencies. My testing is done. What if other testings are not done? Okay. So that was me highlighting this project plan to elaborate dependencies and communicate plan to address handoffs implementation assumptions. We are assuming that our documents test cases test plans will be signed off on timely manner. The access to these testing environments databases will be given on timely manner will be having the proper resources available for performing QA testing and users will be available for performing user testing. All these things are our assumptions any dependencies we are dependent on availability of test environment we are dependent on availability of complete build in form of implementation plans jobs and script we the retesting cycles for fixes defects dependent upon build team response configuration all these things are acceptance criteria that simply mean for every single phase what is that minimum you need to start that phase and how would you end that phase? What are the minimum maximum requirement to exit that phase? How would you qualify that we have finished our SIT? So 
CIT or SIT, every phase had its own acceptance criteria. Give me one second, guys. Okay, two minutes. All right. So acceptance criteria literally mean if you want to start SIT, what is that you have to have to start SIT? You have to have a test plan ready. You have to have all the test data prepared for SIT. And then you can move into SIT. What is the exit criteria of SIT? You must execute all your test scenarios. You must raise all the defects you must close all those defects and you must communicate to all the teams that it has been done that is the exit criteria same way when you move into let's suppose cit cit is your second for example mostly cit is done first and sit is done second so when you move to next phase what is the entry criteria of that phase whatever phases were behind it they are completed Whatever documents are needed, test cases are needed for this case, they have been documented. Test plan has been documented. Now you can, and the access have been granted to the environment. This is your entry criteria. The exit criteria, all the test cases must be executed. Defects must be fixed. Communication must be done. And then you can exit this phase. UAT entry criteria, both SIT and CIT must be done. UAT test cases must be written. UAT test data must be made available. UAT access must be given and then you can enter into UAT. What is the exit criteria? All the test cases must be executed, all the results and mostly you won't have defects in UAT because you don't go in UAT with defects. Remember that thing. This is a question, sometime comes, what happens if there's a defect in the UAT? How do you handle this situation? I know how to answer it. Straightforward, you can answer it that, okay, you simply have to communicate, raise that defect, follow the life cycle, all those. Don't answer it like that. What they are expecting from you is they're expecting you to tell them that we do not go with defects in UAT. If we go in defects with UAT, any defects which have been deferred, we communicate it to the develop to the user team that we are going in uh, UAT testing with the with these two or three defects or one defect. So you don't need to test that function yet. Once that has been finalized, fixed, we'll give you a notification and then you can test it. Clear or not clear? Are you guys there? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, trick question. Answer should be like this, which I just explained you, and I'm gonna again repeat it because this will come. 
UAT question is very common. Whenever you go for implementation partner interviews, first round interviews, they don't ask this question. But when you go with the users, actual people who are hiring you, clients who are hiring you, who are going to work with you, consider them as they are the business team. And they are pretty much most of the time the decision is in the business team, even though IT director, IT team members, everyone, developer can also take your interview. But still, the decision is in the hands of business team because they want to make sure that this is the right person we are hiring. Eventually, he or she will be communicating with us. So how he is going to help us? Okay, in your UAT, what is going to happen in UAT, how he's going to support us in UAT or when he's giving us demos, how he's going to support us or when he's taking change requests from us, how he's going to support us. So they usually ask these questions. One question I remember, uh, first interview, I think my, my first job, they asked me, there were four or five people sitting in front of me, a very laid back uh, environment, relaxed environment. I was so nervous, so reluctant that I don't know anything. There are five people who are sitting in front of me and there are four or five people who are on call. They were from um, the head office team was also there. Uh, but the interview was the most easiest one. I've never given such interview yet. Um, they didn't ask too much technical details. They usually uh, feel that once you go through first and second round, most companies think that you've already done your technical part. So what they're trying to check is your personality, your communication, uh, your calmness and all those things so that is what they basically focus on behavioral part mainly one of the uh, product owner was there i didn't know he's a product owner so he asked me this question he said okay uh, so um, let's suppose if uh, a product owner comes in and during sprint he tells you uh, that we have to uh, prioritize this and that so how are you going to handle that this kind of a statement he gave me so i said uh, okay First of all, um, product owner doesn't have a role in Sprint when we finalize what activities we are going to do uh, in our Sprint planning meeting, product owner is sitting there and we are all agreeing to that. And we have been given two week timeline or three week timeline, we have to work on it. So ideally he should not be bothering us. And they all started laughing. They said, do you know he's a product owner you are going to handle? I was like, okay, I didn't know that. but trick questions can come in so you need to know the right answer i could have simply started saying oh yeah i'll facilitate product owner i'll make sure whatever request he's making i take it to the business team to the development team uh, we try to take care of it within the current sprint i could have said that most people do that just to make the business happy but the right answer is always going to be the right answer it's not that you have to make them happy you have to be logical as well so when UAT question comes in, you have to be logical. Logic is you should not go in UAT with bugs and defects. I mean, there would be some scenarios where it can happen, where they are differing these alerts or these, these defects that they can fix it within next five days, 10 days. But then communication need to be made so that UAT doesn't even touch those. Those users don't even go and check those. All right. So that is the acceptance criteria here this slide means the acceptance criteria of every phase which is entry of that phase and exit of that phase roles and responsibilities who's going to do what in the testing project manager is supposed to get escalation from the project risk and issues get sign offs all these things uh, testing manager should be doing these things plan testing create test plan all those things i really don't know my team uh, my role is somewhere i don't know where okay imran rafiq here you go tech business analyst imran rafiq functional and requirement clarification to testing team which i told you static testing you need to review your requirements you need to revisit your requirement one more time before you go into testing Support and test plan, create test cases, test data, review and sign off, test script, risk review, non functional requirement assessment, test team member Imran Rafiq, preparation of test scenarios and cases, communicating test data, execution of test cases, reporting defect to test manager, retesting defects once fixed, ensuring business area test lead is made aware of any issues in timely manner. See, Anil, 
ensuring business area test lead is made aware of any issues at timely manner so these were something which i had to do test schedule started with okay. sit cat that is starting from 27th april will finish 19th may so pretty much three weeks uh, you should be able to do your functional testing uh, which is basically component integration testing once you have all your test cases ready you can do it in one shot whatever application functions are depending on that it could take you one hour or two hours but that doesn't mean you should be doing it take it slowly gradually be very detail oriented make sure you're following all the steps right and accurately make sure you're recording all the results so take your time make sure whatever timelines are given to you within those times you have to finish it so don't don't try to be over smart i do that i used to do that where i told you already that my effort was done in three days and when i took it to my manager it was like dude what are you doing even though it was right but he said don't do that people will feel we are doing nothing this is a very basic project and they are spending millions on it so don't do it my project manager told me he was indian desi in our own hindi language he said I'm sorry. So you have to be really slow about it. No, no. You cannot no, rush some things. Projects, some projects are going to be very fast paced, complex projects. I had faced the situation in my first project where I was working on three different platforms at one time because it was a solution house whose responsibility is to design softwares and implement softwares, sell those softwares. So we are continuously working on three different application, working with the users. I will walk you through. I'm keeping that project for you at the end of the financial lecture uh, because it's a bit complicated. But once I explain you everything, you'll you'll feel very relaxed that you guys know more about the actual environment. This example of Barclays, when I give you, it is a simple project, and that's why I keep on telling you that these documents were done in no time, even though they gave us a lot of time they were done in no time so these are test schedules test governance i don't know where they copy pasted this defect management process what we will do in quality center we didn't use so we simply defect log these defects in uh, excel sheet and excel sheet was put in uh, a shared drive access was given to to every team member and that's it this is your whole test plan document so again, going back into table of content again, guys, why I keep on focusing table of content, table of content, because your first interviews, your first rounds are going to be question answers, are going to be people who are going to doubt you, judge you. And that is their job because they want to screen out and make sure they're getting the right candidate and putting it through the client. Now, when client comes in, client are usually not uh, uh you know very peculiar about your template knowing how what you know about test plan template how you created they are more toward the functional side of of a ba like communication wise how do you handle issues uh, out of the box thinking can you perform multitasking different situations strengths and weaknesses their focus is mainly on the behavioral part and ba functional part and if it is a uh, core finance then they want to know want to know how much you know about this particular platform financial platform or financial concept let's suppose if it's a trading team who's hiring you then they'll ask you what is your understanding of trading can you walk us through what are different offices in trade, trading front office middle office back office what are their day to day operations and all that so they are more um, you know toward the, these kind of questions but your first rounds are always going to be like this tell me what is a user story how do you write a user story what is a test case what are the steps of test case what is the use case? How do you design use case? What is the template of test plan? So these kind of questions are going to always come in. So you guys need to be ready. Uh, again, uh, I'll make sure you guys are ready because there are going to be a lot of mock interviews and session. This BA course will be done this Thursday. We have two more lectures. Tomorrow is one and then uh, last is on Thursday. Once we are done with that, that is pretty much 30% of your training. Still 70% of training is remaining, which is your domain industry training, plus your resume and mock-ups and interviews and all that. So this is make sure that you go through these templates and at least know what is in the template. So introduction scope, plan testing, test approach, test environments, risk assumption dependencies. 
acceptance criteria, roles, responsibilities, test schedule, test governance, defect management, supporting process, and glossary. So this is your document. You already have it. So please review it one more time. Uh, now, yesterday I sent you day six, day seven lecture notes. All of you got it? Yes, sir. All right. So this is a template also. This is quality center. A very basic stuff. Consider it as Jira. Here you are only going to manage this tool is not going to do any any use any coding or anything nothing it's not going to perform testing for you testing you have to do yourself you're only recording your results and everything here this quality center is a test management tool and it have basically five major modules and this powerpoint is explaining you from starting to log in how you're going to log into quality center and using every single feature and function in this basically it is explained so one by one everything is explained so these are five modules what is requirement module here you are going to upload all your attachment option is available you are going to upload all your frds brds or user story documents and then business component i don't know what is it we don't use it test plan here you're going to write on your test cases here you're going to execute your test cases and record result uh, defects here you're going to raise your defects for example i'm going to show you requirement module so what is the requirement module how to create new requirement you can attach your document plus you can simply click on this plus button pretty much every quality center is going to be same click on plus button it will open up a small window you can type in the first requirement login using this so one by one you can save all these requirements here now why we need to do that i'll show you later so these are this is how you are writing what is the requirement priority is it reviewed all these things how to create new child requirement from one requirement further multiple scenarios can be created so you will create those requirements as well uh, how to attach requirement you can simply attach those document how to attach document to a requirement this is the attachment section and you can simply click on it and upload the file see this word document has been uploaded test plan module create test cases write test steps so once you go in test module on the left panel click on this test plan module here is the button of creating new folder you will create a folder by your project name once folder is created then you can create a new test case the next button once you click on it it will give you the test type manual test name this and then you keep on saving it and then further you can write down steps these are the test steps writing test scripts these are the description step one as a user user should be able to log in the application by inputting www.facebook.com test step two whatever steps i told you in template now you're putting it here see step one step two this is how it is saving step one description expected results step two description expected results step three description expected results all the test cases can be written here you don't need to use excel powerpoint anything how to link test scripts with the requirements now each test case can be linked with the requirements you created on top so that these test cases are linked to those requirements so you can also link them and then once you go in test lab module that is where you can run these tests execute these tests for example i'll show you one example here so you click on first test you open the first test step you on the second screen you have your application you're using the application using those steps but before using it you click on run what it is going to do this software is not going to test it is only going to record the time your function took and you can simply click on stop once you are done and then there will be a drop down where you can add pass or fail here is the drop down and you can simply say if this test case passed or this test case failed so it record the status here passed failed no run it 
didn't run and these are the timelines it's giving the first step took this many seconds second step to this many seconds so these seconds and minutes are being recorded as well as i said um, most companies avoid this when they are using agile because this again becomes hectic process even though they can you know uh, use it they have more organized testing but still if they have uh, jira they can simply create tickets on jira and then log tick defects there and then an excel sheet can also be uploaded there but if they're using tool then all these things can be done using these tools how to raise defects i don't think i need to go through all these slides because every slide is self explanatory you simply need to go to one or two module test plan module defect module and the requirement module to see some basic functions on it uh, again nobody is going to ask you in interview how quality center is used mostly the question might come uh, not mostly very often very rare that this question might come uh, which quality center you have used they will ask you that so let's suppose if you're mentioning something or they're looking for some ba who have worked on testing side mainly so you'll say i've used alm quality center vendor or first round interviewers they might ask you okay what version you use so i use alm 11.5 okay can you tell me how many modules are there oh yeah it have five modules what modules are there requirement module test lab test plan library uh, defect module and dashboard okay that's it they are not going to go further and how to create because explaining these steps until unless your system is in front of you and you can use and show them otherwise you'll not be able to tell them how to create a test case and how to link the module how to how to link the requirement with the test case and all that so mainly remember this uh, when you are having your resumes finalized if you're putting quality center in any of project remember that quality center what versions you have used versions i'll let you know and then these are the modules you already know so these questions may come in so that's pretty much it uh, go through these documents some readings what are different types of test what is rtm all these things software test plan document test case document is also attached there so please go through that uh, read it and assignments which i've given you on test cases yesterday finish it submitted before tomorrow class and if you're not doing it you are not going to answer me during the mock interviews you will simply observe it until you finish your assignments i again telling you this is very important and just be now by now you know why assignments are important okay let's suppose if you find a project and they tell you to write a user story you would have written a user story the way you written first time and then if they tell you okay redo it you would have written it the way you did it second time and even okay, and forth. Yeah, yes. so, okay. so make sure, make so sure. So you're uh, pretending like you're my uh, manager or something. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> so giving me feedback then. And then at the end, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it right. <laughs> you know, like why he's replying right away when I'm sending the email. <laughs> so I was back and forth. I'm like, no, I'm going to do it. I was fighting back and no, forth. I really, I really appreciate you redoing it three times in like one day. So it's good. This is what I need. So don't consider I'm giving you very simple assignments. Um, I know some people uh, had this thing. Um, uh, I had many classes where a couple of students were not doing assignments. And when I asked them, why are you not doing assignments? Uh, mostly the answer is that I'm not able to understand. Okay, I'll help you. But some people were saying, oh, I don't think this is too technical. The, the work is different from what you are telling in this assignment. So I was like, okay, good luck. So I know because I've worked. What happens? What kind of document? This is the same documents you're going to create. Same user stories you're going to write. Same templates you're going to follow. So if you do it with your own hands once, it is a good practice. Eventually, when you join the project, inshallah, soon when you join the project, you guys won't be reluctant. You guys don't need to ask too many questions. It is good asking questions when you join a project, but not too many small questions that oh, how to can I can I get a template of user story or anything? You simply start doing it. I know. And if manager says, oh, no, follow this template, okay, fine, I'll follow that template. But at least you started yourself something.
All right. So tomorrow's lecture is going to be on the most important lecture. I'm sorry, Anil. Uh, no question, Naimran. Okay. Okay. Uh, Anil, your assignments are excellent. Uh, keep it up. Very, very professional. I think if you continue doing this, it will be very easy for you uh, to handle all those tasks you'll be assigned. So, good job. All right. Um, Thank you, Madam. Tomorrow's lecture is very important. I know you guys think I'm sending you recordings and all that. It's fine. I know same thing is in the recording which I'm talking right now. There's nothing different. But attending the meeting uh, online at the same time when I'm joining, it is useful. Why? Because then you can ask questions. Okay, I really usually don't ask you guys uh, next day what is your question from previous lecture. Why I do that? Because I know that I've done that yesterday as well and I've sent you the uh, recording as well. So being there is important. Any question you have and I always tell you please don't hesitate to ask questions. We are sitting, we are all family right now. Okay, nobody is judging. I'm not judging you. That, oh, why are you asking me a stupid question? There's no stupid question. You are learning. Right now, you are learning. You are not sitting in a project. So if you ask question now, you know how to ask question when you're sitting in your actual meetings as well. Okay. So that's it. I'll be uploading this recording uh, in 40 minutes. Thank you.